Skillstra presents. Um, what about that then? People using or companies using the tools for negative outcomes. Is that a thing then? Could you actually leverage algorithms to actually evoke certain information though? Yes. And so this is a very important discussion. Um, there's a long history of this. If you go back to when Google was founded, uh, which was founded by uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they came up with an algorithm they called PageRank, which allowed you to very quickly find the right content. And they, they determined right content as in a trusted source. So on the internet, there are, if you ever go to a web browser, you see a link and you click on it, it brings you to someone's web page or some other website. And so the more links that go to the same place would increase the trust that you might have that it's a reputable source. And so Google first made all of its money by being a search engine that let you find exactly what you were looking for because it indexed the web and made it easy for you to find things you didn't even know existed. So that was really positive, right? And then you slowly moved into those different other social networks that came on. I'll, I'll actually mention one that is not a social network, but was dominant, so Netflix. Uh, Netflix came on as this really amazing company that wanted to deliver DVDs right to your door. And they, they had a prize, this is back in 2000, I think 2007, where they offered a million dollar prize if someone could develop an algorithm that could increase their recommendation accuracy by 10%. Right. This is where you watch a movie and then Netflix says, hey, based on the movie you watched, I bet you'd like the following movies. And naturally, if they recommend a movie with higher accuracy, they can raise more money because people find out about movies they didn't know they'd like. And they keep going back to Netflix for that experience. So that was one of the first social engaged networks, algorithms that really improved their bottom line, because if you could give better recommendations, then you'd have people keep coming back to your site. And now the one that started your discussion is the whole Facebook meta issue. And so when they came on the scene, they had this really great idea of connecting humans together. And so you can go to their place and see what your friends are doing and you can post what you're doing. And even though uh, it's, it seems like it's just uh, years of history, it's only been about 15 to 20 years ago. The first thing they had was a like button. If you see what someone posted, you could like it. And that gave some really good feedback from you to that person. And hopefully it was one of your friends so that you knew who they were and you wanted to send them some, some love that day. Um, but eventually as the network grew, they needed something more to try to represent what you might like or not like. Because the idea there was if you'd like some content, maybe they can use that to provide you with more content like it. Again, that same Netflix idea, try to recommend things to you that you might like. And then they made a little shift. Uh, and again, I don't, no one really remembers because it seems like they've been there forever, but back around 2016, uh, they added more reactions. Uh, it started out, they only had a like button and they initially had plans to have a dislike button at the same time, but they decided when they started the company, they didn't want to be in the business of sending negative down votes. They only wanted to have upvotes, which is a very nice thing. But then in around 2016, they added five more. And these are the ones where you've got love, you've got sadness, uh, you have the angry face, you have the wow face, um, and then the laughter. Now, if you look at those things, you know, the one that stands out to me is the angry face. So all the other ones were in line with sort of Facebook's idea of connecting humans together. Do you like this? Are, are you sad? I'm, I'm with you as well. Um, are you wow? Are you excited? Are you laughing? But then there's that angry face. And the reason why this became an issue is because, well, if you show that your anger on something, what should Facebook do with that information? And there was a time when on Facebook, they had a little news feed on the right-hand side that would show you active news. And so they have a weighting scheme, that's their algorithm that says based upon your reactions and based upon everyone else's reactions, they're trying to figure out what content to give you. And so they had this, algorithm that would weight the information based on did you did someone like it did they love it with the anger and so what they turned out is that they added five times the effect of the anger as opposed to just the like and so as more and more uh, re reactions appeared and more and more were either love or hate then they became more um, they had more of an impact on the ranking scheme. And so those things that people hated more would start to rise to the top. 
So here's an, a situation. So this is just the algorithm doing what it's told to do. Uh, I'm trying to provide feedback to you. And so the things that you liked, I'll give you more of that. But the things that you hate, I'll give you more of that as well. And so you see that it led to this opportunity um, where they were trying to drive people to their site and generate revenue because that's what they do, just like Netflix is trying to generate revenue. But inadvertently, they're, they're raising the things that get people angry. Uh, and that's the stuff that really became an issue. Um, and we're starting to find out more about this because this is internal discussions of the company. Uh, and every now and then some of this stuff gets leaked out as to how they go about it. And there were some employees that were very sort of nervous about this idea that you're, you're promoting something that someone hated as a way to drive uh, someone to click on it. And so they eventually, um, just two years ago, they came up with that final seventh reaction, which is the care reaction. Uh, this was done in reaction to the pandemic and to try to give people a way of showing, uh, you know, it's not that I don't love you or don't like you, I'm trying to show care uh, to build the community. So they did come back in a, in a way to the original roots. And now they've since changed the ranking scheme so that if someone says that they hate something, they're really angry at it, that no longer has a role in promoting their content. That they now have a weighting scheme that if you love or you care something, that's a two times in, in, um, effect as opposed to just liking, which has a one effect. So there was this time of, for five years when they were really promoting content based upon whether someone hated it. And that's sort of what was the problem. Um, did it give them more revenue? Possibly. Because as you know, there's also the larger societal issues that we have from just regular network broadcasting. The idea on the nightly news, uh, at least in America, one of the, the ideas was, well, if it bleeds, then it leads. So the idea that the nightly news has to have that one item that's going to get you to watch because you're going to be so upset, you've got to watch it. Mm -hmm. And that transferred over to the social networks. So it's all about trying to have a balance. The algorithm is just there to do a job. Uh, that are just automatic. But if they leave out the fact that it has an impact on the human or the impact on the community, that's where it starts to go sideways. This is a Skillstruck presentation. If you like what you hear and see, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.